Alright, I'm going to put these together. I'm going to try and avoid taking my rack down. See if I can get them built in this space here. No, I'm just putting the carcasses together. It's flush at the bottom. Very, very slightly out of the top, but I don't know. What's important is it's flush at the bottom and it's face down. So put all the biscuits in, three biscuits. And then I'm using these coarse thread drywall screws. And the countersink bit is just short by 15 or so mil. So when it drills in, this part of the screw won't be doing a great deal, but the tip will be the bit that's holding. And because it's piloted right through to there, it won't split out this edge, it won't split there. It'll be held almost 360 degrees around. So I'll drill it like that. When it goes through, just the tip will be holding it. I've got my biscuit there, so I can get a screw in this end here. no shear strength in these if I twist this cabinet or if I over tighten it you'll just pop the head off but they're only holding it until the glue goes off on this end grain gluing end grain is not normally very good but because these are layers that are perpendicular to each other you've got end grain then side grain end grain side grain so you do actually get quite a good glue fix between the two boards you know on the end of here plus the biscuits, plus the screws, plus the fact that this is just sitting on the base. It's not going anywhere. See, it's starting to bite just there. And just for putting it together, I'll put another one at the bottom, one at the top, that's all. doing nothing to there and you can feel it tightening up that's it just pulls up don't over tighten it you pop the head off right i'm going to cut one of the backs for it the big back i've only put one divider in i'll drop the other one in when i get it up in place when i get it stood up i'm just going to cut the backs i use nine mil for the few pound more you get a better better job you know than six mil boards it's just a bit shit spend a few more pence spend a few more pound and get a better quality back on it right quite often factory cut boards are square or pretty square anyway but to check measure corner to corner 2730 And that is two seven two nine. If you're doing this, you do need to check that you haven't got damaged corners because you'll lose a millimetre or two or more. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trust the factory cut corner, I'll leave the sticker on there. That's telling me that that's square. If you cut a square, make a square mark like that, that represents square. And from that, I'll cut the back out. I'm going to put the spare bit of this splinter guard on my track that I joined. You can see there's a very slight step there. You can see it. So sometimes if the pencil marks around here, around here, it's a bit, it's a bit hard to know where exactly where to go. What I didn't mention earlier was this edge gets a bit of resin on it over over the time so i used some bit of 120 just to rough it up a little bit and i'll give it a wipe down and stick this on that's better i've trimmed this edge off now there's no rocking in it 
see what I mean where the pencil line lines up there. I've got a straight line right through now. And it's a fairly good cut, not on that side, not on the waist side. But it's a fairly good cut. I think my blade's getting a bit tired. Right, I've got my square edge there. Starting with a short end. It's easier to fix that. And then pull this long edge to shape. I'm just putting a few screws in that I can take out later. They won't be getting used. I'm just using little drywall screws. No pile at all. Just banging them in. Just making sure that the board's pressed down while I'm doing it. But I'll work my way along here. Just put probably just four or so along here. It only needs to be something like for now. I'm just struggling to pull this out. I've got it sound battened so that I can get my hand underneath, but I can't move it. And this one will be getting another timber down here, another board on the face of this. So, what I can do, give myself something to screw, hold on to. Should be able to pull it in then. And I want to finish flush with this one. Take that out. Nobody, nobody will ever see that. Now, I've got to see if I can stand it up. See, I ain't got a lot of room either way. The shelves going in this one, so just above the battens, I'll be able to put a screw, and then when the shelf goes in, you won't be able to see that. There'll be a timber on the front of here for the door to clap against, so I can get some screws behind there. I'll be screwed where the hinge, where the shelves are. Get some screws in the top. That'll be fine. So now I've got to get those few boards out, get them out here push that back and get the little one made all right two carcasses needs to get some shelves in here get some more screws in this one that I've just clamped in place and I'm going to build some 3 by 2 bases I'll level them in here best I can sit these on top then I can think about putting in front frames and making doors single doors they're going to be big ass doors then I'm going to have soft close hinges but I might still put some magnetic catches on just to just to make those tops tops touch properly keep them in place we'll see and I've got some end panels to go on
Right, when screwing a piece of wood together like this, sometimes when you put that first screw in, as soon as it bites, it'll twist this piece here. So, put one in till it's just going into the wood. And bang your other one in, that one's stopping it from spinning. Right, so now I've got them two frames, got some support for the middle of that. It doesn't need any support in the middle of there, that's 18mm ply, it's plenty strong enough in the middle there. I'm going to screw these down, pack them up, pack them as level as I can and put these units on top. I think I'm going to put this one across this way, and then I can get to the ends on each one. So I need to do the end panel that scribes up against the fire burst. Alright. Got some more screws in that divider. Put some shelves in. I'm putting these shelf buttons on. Put a couple of screws just in the front of this. I'll probably end up taking them off because there's a strip going on here. I'm going to put a little button on there. Put this board, this piece of scrap, put an X at the top so I know which way around it goes. Because it's almost square, I can get it wrong. I'll pin this on. I've got some pins here that are only just long enough for the button and they'll go into one board so they won't join these two together. But I'll glue and pin these on. Stick that one on, move the board up, move it over, do the same on the other side. I cut them so they're just a fraction shorter than the shelves. I've got a 20mm lip going on. And then on the hinge side there's a, I'm making a rebate, I'm using overlay hinges so I need to put a timber on there that's about 65-70mm, so that'll bring it to about there with a 20mm lip, it'll just cover these buttons.
uh, when they're dry I'll take them out, sand them, just give the like, front edge a bit of a round there's nothing glued in and there's just that like, clamp holding them together like I say, once they're dry I'll take them out and put some screws in there to hold that together I've got to work on my van this weekend get them brakes fixed and I can go shopping for hardwood and I'll start making the front frames next week.